Hello, and thank you for your attention regarding Article 44, Townwide Amendments. My name is Amanda Loomis, and I'm the Planning Director here in Lexington. Article 44 was developed as a result of the town's public engagement efforts and drafting efforts associated with Article 44, Hartwell Innovation Park. During such efforts, best practices were identified and were found to be beneficial for the entire town. Over the next several slides, I will identify such best practices and how they will impact Lexington. The table of uses dictates uses that are and are not allowed in Lexington. It should be noted that the letter N means not allowed, the letter Y means allowed by right, and the letters SP requires a special permit. The table of use upon completion of the comprehensive plan update will receive a comprehensive review and update to ensure it aligns with the town's goals. But until such time, there is existing uses that needed to be update, but we also added two new uses that includes lines N15, brewery, winery, distillery, cidery, and line N16, makerspace. You will see that we have provided either the letter N or the letter Y for each of those uses. In efforts to respond to the comments of staff, municipal boards, and the public, it was determined that such uses, such as office, retail slash commercial, manufacturing, research development, and restaurants would benefit from a reduction in the required number of loading bays, which currently yields more loading bays than businesses typically need. This table that is presented here on the screen presents what is required under the existing zoning bylaw and what would be under the proposed of Article 44. Also, to the right of the screen, it shows the number of loading bays that would be required based on a size of a building in perspective to those numbers. It should be noted that by reducing the number of non-needed loading bays, this will result in a decrease in impervious area and also a better site design. In efforts to reduce single occupant vehicle trips for office, research and development, and lab space, Article 44 proposes to require additional rideshare off-street parking spaces for projects with 50,000 square feet or more. This requirement currently exists within the Lexington Zoning Bylaw at one parking space per 150 off-street parking spaces, which we would be then shifting to one rideshare parking space per every 50 off-street parking spaces with a minimum of two. Another effort to increase mobility within Lexington includes the requirement of two bicycle parking spaces for every 15 parking spaces. This is compared to what currently exists, which is two bicycle parking spaces for every 20 off-street parking spaces. Although this may result in a small increase in bicycle parking, this should be essential to both bicyclists and also the future bicycle infrastructure. Another way to decrease impervious pavement would be to provide parking options through shared parking agreements. This may allow two businesses with opposite schedules to share a parking lot. It may allow a residential use and an office use to share a parking lot where their peak demands for parking is different or overflow parking for park, um, restaurants or other uses such as offices um, that may be located elsewhere. It is important to note that there must be an executed parking agreement between the landowners and off-site parking lots with more than more than 12,000 feet away from the use has to provide either public transportation, a, par, a transportation shuttle or alternative transportation services. This amendment relative to trees on private property proposes two things. One, an increase in new tree size, which was currently two inch caliper would be now required under article 44, a three inch caliper. Also required trees would need to be native or hybrid native on private property. This does not impact street trees, which are located within the public right away. Electric vehicles, EV, are becoming increasingly popular in addition to new state requirements. This effort was originally part of the Hartwell Innovation Park rezoning effort, but 
was also identified as good practice for the entire community. Therefore, with input from landowners and Sustainable Lexington, Article 44 proposes to require parking lots with 25 or more newly constructed parking spaces to have a minimum of 4% of those spaces have EV charging stations with a level two or higher. And a minimum of 50% of the parking spaces would have to be EV ready. Also within this subsection, we would be requiring off-street parking to be located to the side and the rear of a building. The planning board is the reviewing authority for site plan review, which includes many commercial projects, which, and in addition to Hartwell projects. This update to the review of projects sets expectations for developers to create sustainable climate sensitive projects and also requires landscaping to be both functional and aesthetically pleasing, provides transportation options aside from the single occupant vehicle, and protects surface and groundwater. But it also sets the expectations for developers and sets the standards as which the project will be reviewed under. Updates to definitions that will call out specific uses or provide clarification as to what Lexington wants or will allow is also part of Article 44. For example, allowing flex office space would now fall under business and professional offices. Upgrading the definitions for light manufacturing to ensure that we would be getting the uses that we would want that are classified typically under light manufacturing. Also, allowing brew pubs to be classified as a restaurant. To ensure Lexington remains current, several new uses were added to the table of uses, but we also had to add definitions that to be associated with those uses, such as makerspace, which is a great option for formal, former governmental buildings or commercial spaces. There are successful um, examples of makerspaces in Brookline, Watertown, Cambridge, and other areas within the Commonwealth. It is also important that these uses be called out in the bylaw so that when developers are trying to see where their use could fit into a community and they come across a term within the zoning bylaw, they can do further investigation into that community. If such use is not specifically called out within a zoning bylaw, then often those applicants or businesses will continue to look at other communities where they find their uses that are allowed and easily called out. Thank you for your time and staff is available to answer any of your questions.